what's up gears another new series starts today this is how i would improve specific elements of gears of wars horde mode this is something i've wanted to do for a while so i've put a great amount of time and energy into making this video without giving away anything early i plan on making eight videos for this series releasing fortnightly hopefully with each one covering a different aspect of horde mode giving you some of my ideas and improvements for the one mode I have invested most of my Gears 5 playtime into. We will start out with how I would improve the promotional classes in Gears 5. Originally these were very basic and haphazard classes that have been touched on a little bit but all four of these promotional classes are still fairly basic and need a lot more to flesh them out. I wanted to share my own ideas backed up with some custom card designs with some ways I have thought to improve these four classes even more. I hope you guys enjoy this kind of video and I wanted to use it just to spark some discussion about possible class ideas for future Gears games. I know that nothing will ever come of this but if the coalition carries on with the RPG elements and class system they have in Gears 5, I don't want to see half baked classes going into Gears 6 since they have proved they can make some very fun and unique classes and I just want to throw some extra ideas of my own into that. Please leave me some feedback about my videos in general as I am trying a bunch of new things while nothing new has been coming out for gears and I want to improve the content I upload. Getting straight into this let's work down the list of promotional classes starting with the architect. Firstly this was the most fleshed out promotional class we ever had so I've tried not to go too over the top with this one but I would instantly move this class into the support role since it is partly an engineer already. Here are some of the skill card ideas I've had as well. Advanced decoy. Increase the health of decoys by 20 to 120% and damage taken by decoys will recharge your ultimate cooldown. A simple addition here making use of the existing engineer side and specialising on one fortification, specifically decoys. I would also have loved to have seen the mechanic and robotics expert being able to specialise in a specific fortification each, getting extra benefits and stats for that single fortification, being able to improve it more than any other engineer could. Not much else to say about this one really other than that decoys are underappreciated and it syncs up quite well with the architect's already existing playstyle. Embar Expert increases damage by 10 to 60% and active effects by 5 to 30% with the M-Bar. The idea for this card once again is simple, but the architect starts out with this weapon. Only the marksman has a weapon card specialising the M-Bar, which I almost forgot about, and plenty of enemies exist in both Horde and Escape that drop this weapon. I don't think the damage increase is enough to turn this class into a sniper damage class, but the active effects could improve the partial stun this weapon provides, improving the support of this class once again. If you did have a card like this and paired it with the existing deception card, you could become extremely lethal as the architect will. Healing Hologram. Your hologram will heal fortifications within 5 meters of its path for 500 to 1500 health. This one takes inspiration from the robotics expert's precision repairs card, acting in a similar manner to that. Since the architect is capable of sending its hologram ultimate forward until it hits a wall or cover, Utilising this in a repair kind of manner, allowing distant repairs, crowd control and a unique use for this class's ultimate ability. Mastercraft Decoy. Decoys can be upgraded to level 5 or 0 to 15% cheaper. Just a quick and simple idea for engineers in general, which I've already slightly touched on. Giving each engineer class the ability to take one fortification even further to level 5. Mastercraft Decoy would be the architect's specialist fortification. We have a level 5 decoy having more health, still exploding when destroyed, but it could also have something extra. It could reflect small amounts of damage, shock enemies, cause bleeding, just something extra that only the architect could achieve with this card equipped. Like I said earlier, it would have been really refreshing to see different engineers being able to make certain fortifications go to a higher level than what other engineers could, giving us new class combos and fortifications in Gears 5. Ammo Dump Weapon lockers refill ammo and stored weapons 20 to 40% faster. Giving the architect a boost to their own weapon lockers would allow them to not be outclassed by mechanics or robotics experts in this area, leveling the playing field. Alternatively, this card could refill ammo instantly, say 5 to 
the e kill the architect gets with a forced vacation. Only a single version of these two ideas should be implemented, but let me know which one you would prefer. Let's move on to our next promotional class, the Protector. Starting out with this one, I would move the Protector into the tank category and I designed some custom cards for this class that revolve around that idea. Bodyguard. Picking up an enemy as a meat shield will taunt enemies within 20 meters for 2 to 4 seconds. Your meat shield will also gain a 20 to 120% stim shield. Sticking with the idea of the Protector being a close range tank class, I came up with this idea simply to fit a niche kind of playstyle. There are currently no cards in the game that offer an area of effect taunt, and this would aim to change that, without causing the Protector to instantly fall over. It also gives a class some use with meat shields, since I rarely see them ever get used in Horde or Escape. Clash of Titans Deal 5-30% to more damage to Scions, DR1s, Pouncers and other big targets, excluding bosses, but deal 5-15% to less damage to drone enemies. The only card similar to this would be Cooperation from the Tactician, but giving it a slight twist for the Protector. Being able to deal more damage to other tankier enemies was my thought process here, while there is a trade off when it comes to smaller enemies. I don't think the Protector struggles too much with its existing damage output, but adding in a card like this would give this class a unique benefit, whilst giving it the chance to prioritise certain enemies, instead of mindlessly killing everything. Time Warp Enemies that enter your drop shield will have their movement speed reduced by 10% to 6%. There is currently only one class that can slow enemies in the entire game, the Brawler, so it would be nice to see other classes have similar effects in some way or another. This may not always be useful in Horde since you cannot shoot through the drop shield, but being able to place this in chokeholds and slow anything that comes through would be amazing for certain Horde maps and escape. This could work really well when a Warden is charging at you, giving you a chance to slow it down and dodge its leaping ground slam, giving you even more time to retaliate. Forgotten Bond. When within 10 meters of the Architect, you deal 5 to 30% more ballistic damage, and the Architect will deal 5 to 30% more melee damage. Both classes also gain 20 to 30% of damage resistance. Since the Protector and the Architect classes were originally Cat and Emil from the Halo Reach promotional characters, this kind of thing came to mind when considering the inspiration card that the Demolitions class has, only improving on it slightly. It's a subtle idea that would improve both classes whilst they are being played together, but does still set a limitation to this card. The Turtle. Anyone standing inside your drop shield gains 20 to 50% damage resistance and 50 to 200% forced health regeneration. Very similar to the resupply healing module card, doing pretty much the same thing, but it does give the protector even more survivability, making them pretty much impossible to kill whilst they are in their bubble. This could be very useful in escape as well, giving teams a breather if they are getting overwhelmed, and possibly even allowing them to heal through venom damage. Almost any class benefits from a card like this, making it easier to survive, even if something is inside the drop shield with you. Toxic Friendship. Killing enemies while in venom or ash will reduce teammates ultimate cooldowns by 10 to 20 seconds. Sticking with the idea of the protector tanking or protecting other classes, as well as giving an escape specific card to this class was the idea here. Escape hives that have the longer ultimate cooldown mutator, or classes like the pilot or demo, would really benefit from something like this. Plus, only the original three classes, or characters as they were, Mac, Keegan and Lani, which are now the anchor, blademaster and tactician, got any kind of escape only card. This aims to change that. Resilience. Gain 20-35% to damage resistance when you have no stim. With the idea of making the Protector a tank class, this class currently only has a single defensive card, Regenerative Field. So, introducing more unique damage resistance cards would give this class extra survivability in both Horde and Escape. This gives players more options to build their Protector, whether they want flat damage resistance or stim generation. With all of the existing and proposed defense cards, on the Protector, it wouldn't be as tanky as a gunner, but it would definitely be close and deserving of being in the tank category. Time to look at the third promotional class, the Slugger, who is more than capable of being put into the damage category as a grenade specialist. Speaking of this, I think the passive for this class could be changed to accommodate his playstyle even more. I would like to have seen the Slugger being capable of carrying up to three different kinds of grenades, 
There could be a penalty for this, reducing the explosive resistance passive down to 30%, or reduce ammo carrying capacity for all weapons, or even remove the ability to carry a pistol as a slugger. I believe a change like this wouldn't be too bad without penalising it too much, but other than that I've got more skill cards that I've fought up to help this class out even more, and I'll cover these now. Shot Grenade Mod Shot grenades will now arc toward enemies up to 10 meters away and can chain from 0 to 5 times, stunning enemies in place for 3 seconds. I do love the idea of having different classes feeling unique even when using the same weapon as other classes. A card like this would aim to modify the behavior of shot grenades in a meaningful way, providing some more unique crowd control while still inflicting some damage. The distance of the arcing electricity could be reduced slightly if it is deemed too strong, but I would have really liked to have seen cards that change the way different weapons are used. Incendiary Grenade Mod Incendiaries will bounce up to 1-6 to six times, igniting the area around it. Another grenade modification that could improve the usefulness and potential damage output of incendiary grenades. Like I said with the Shot Grenade card, I want these to feel unique, fun and don't always have to be capable of killing a boss in one hit. I feel that incendiaries are a little weak in general, but being able to lit up more of the map could be a good change with this card, especially when you pair it with the current grenade proficiency skill card, increasing the size of the explosion left behind. Smoke Grenade Mod Smoke grenades will slow enemies by 10-60% to and reduce their accuracy by 5-30%. to Having another class capable of slowing enemies and adding the accuracy modifier to this card as well gives this class more subtle crowd control functionality. Currently, smoke grenades do basically nothing in Horde, so it would be nice even for just one class to get some use from these, in a meaningful way, as smoke grenades are there to obscure vision. Flash Grenade Mod Flashbangs will become a decoy for those not affected by the flash within 10 meters for 1 to 4 seconds. Thinking another grenade type we have and thinking along the lines of crowd control, flashbangs can be a little unpredictable. Enemies can be stood on a flashbang and be completely unaffected by it. This card would help by causing a temporary decoy. Pairing this with other types of grenades from the slugger, some unique traps could be set up using just grenades. I would suggest the flashbang element remains in place with this, so you can still make use of them against tougher enemies. Frag Grenade Mod Frag Grenades will cause bleeding damage for 5-30% to of the damage caused. Since most assault classes can cause bleeding damage, it would be unfair to the slugger by trying to include it in the assault category without being able to bleed enemies, and this seems to be an easy fit for the class without the bleed being too over the top. Alternatively, you could stick with the idea of crowd control once again, granting frag grenades the ability to stun enemies for a few seconds when they are hit by them. Two different ideas for a card once again, so let me know which one you would have preferred to have seen. Gas Grenade we generate one grenade every 30 to 15 seconds while standing in the venom cloud or ash. If you have no grenades available, generate a random grenade. Venom based skill cards are still few and far between, and the slugger would benefit greatly from a card like this. Giving other classes some unique trait for escape can only be a positive thing, as it's still just the anchor, blade master, and tactician that have any sort of venom based skill card. Not every escape hive would benefit from a card like this, but it would help the slugger to be more reliable since a lot of hives have barely enough grenades available for other classes. Covering Fire Killing enemies with your ultimate will increase the duration of your ultimate by 2-3 to three seconds. Just another simple addition for this class, since I would reassign it to the Assault group. This supports the existing ultimate by giving it a chance to last longer if you get some kills with it. Alternatively, turn this card into a flat duration increase, taking it down to a purple rarity. Heavy Hitter isn't a bad ultimate ability, but Assault classes rely on their ultimate a lot, except maybe the Nomad, so the Slugger should get the same kind of treatment. Moving on to the final promotional class for today with the Striker. I was a little bit stuck with which category I should move this one into, but a comment on my Striker class guide video had me remember the absurd damage potential this class has. Moving the Striker to the Assault category seemed like the correct choice. Here are some card ideas I've also had for this class. Alloy Reinforced Increased ammo capacity by 20-120% and ammo regeneration 1-6% for the Breaker Mace. Breaker Mace is a stupidly fragile weapon, but the Striker relies on this more than any other class. 
giving it a utility boost by having it last longer and the ability to repair over time would make the strike much more effective with this weapon. Breaker maces are hard to get hold of in horde and even rarer in escape so having a card like this would definitely give this class some more use. The Tremor. Ground slams with the Breaker Mace will stun any enemy's hit for 1 to 4 seconds. The Tremor used to be the name of a unique enemy found in Ram's Shadow DLC in Gears of War 3, so this name pays homage and it takes inspiration from that enemy. The Tremor used to hit the ground with a hammer that would summon Cedars, so following that same thought process, we can also slam the ground in Gears 5, but stunning enemies seem like a good alternative. The ground slam with the breaker mace has a surprisingly large area of effect and it doesn't always require you to have line of sight with the enemy. So I could see myself using cards like this consistently if it were included with the striker. Venomous Rage. Killing an enemy while in the venom cloud or ash restores 30 to 100% of your health. Going back to a venom specific card, this would improve the survivability of the striker in those tense situations when the venom is getting a little bit too close. Both the Protector and Blade Master get health and health regen from their cards and perks, and I wanted to implement this same idea into the Striker. It would make for a strange situation being able to stay in Venom much longer than other classes, but getting hurt by Venom also procs the Striker's movement speed passive, making this a strange but unique pairing. Custom Overkill Increased damage and active effects by 5-30% to with the Overkill Shotgun. Another simple card, since no other class specialises in this weapon, the striker starts with it, and plenty of these drop from grenadiers and DR1s in Horde and Escape. The overkill is a very powerful weapon on its own, but both the protector and blade master get buffs with the Nasher, so why not include a shotgun buff for the striker as well? I would enjoy using the overkill more if any class got a buff when using it. The striker seems like the perfect candidate. Time tested. When within 10 meters of a slugger, deal 5 to 30% increased ballistic damage, and the slugger will deal 5 to 30% increased melee damage. Both classes also gain 20 to 30% damage resistance. The slugger and striker were originally Sarah Connor and Grace from the Terminator promotional DLC, and this card is basically a carbon copy of the one I proposed earlier for the protector, whilst being a nod to the class's original characters. This would allow the classes involved to get their own set of buffs should they be played together, whilst limiting the card once again. Blood Frenzy increases the duration of enhanced melee by 20-40%. Getting melee or bleed kills while enhanced melee is active increases its duration by 1-2 seconds. Since I would include the striker into the assault category, it would be unfair to not be able to extend the length of enhanced melee. Classes like the Anchor and Infiltrator have flat duration increases for their ultimate abilities, and separate cards that increase its duration further whilst it's being used. You will notice the bonus to what I'm proposing with this card is not as strong as those separate cards from those classes, but it does only take up a single card slot. CQC increases melee attack speed by 20 to 40 percent. The striker doesn't really suffer from a lack of damage, and I wanted to include some sort of utility based card and I realised no classes in Gears 5 have any way of increasing their attack speed. Giving the striker something like this would vastly improve the damage capabilities of this class, able to match the Blade Master and Protector in a slightly different manner. There we have it, a number of different card designs and concepts that I believe could improve the promotional classes in Gears 5. You most likely have ideas of your own, so make sure you leave a comment down below and let's get some discussion going on class ideas. Since making a return to YouTube those few months ago, I've avoided asking you guys to subscribe and like until I knew I could get back into the swing of things. But if you haven't already, leave me a like if you liked this video, or a dislike if you didn't. Subscribing to the channel would be massively appreciated, and when I upload my next episode in my How I Would Improve series, this will be pushed to your subscription feed. As always, gears though, take it easy, and I will catch you in the next one. Try, but you never do Sugar, there's a